Hello there guys. I've been a bit quiet for the last week or so. I just felt like taking a quick break after finishing the 124th scale Spitfire. But I'm back now with a quick look at this kit from TACOM, which is going to be on the workbench soon. So as you can see, this is one of TACOM's 135th scale V2 rocket kits. TACOM have released this in a number of guises over the years. They have this kit here of the V2 rocket on its own. They have another version here with the V2 rocket, the um, Hanomag um, tractor, and this trailer. And in fact, this trailer here is also the uh, launch um, device for the V2. Then they have the version I'm looking at today, which is the uh, V2, the Hanomag, and a different trailer. This is simply the transportation trailer. And finally, they sell the V2 the transportation trailer and this crane to lift it from uh, one location to another. I'll come back to this in a while. This is one of those kits that I bought on a bit of a whim. I was never really sure I suppose what I was going to do with it, but now I want to start to think about that. If we have a look on the side of the box here we can see the profile of the um, tractor, the trailer and the V2. And clearly it's very large. Whether we have the uh, V2 being pulled along or somehow uh, in the launch position, it's going to be a large diorama on at least one of the dimensions. So let's have a look inside. The box is dominated by these two uh, halves. In actual fact, each half is split in two. So I suppose we've got quarters here. A lovely detail on here. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera unless I zoom in. We've got an incredible amount of uh, rivet detail all the way around the side of the rocket itself. I think that's going to take paint very nicely. Um, due to the nature of these rockets, I guess they're not going to be super, super weathered, although it depends how we uh, decide to use it in the final diorama. But certainly a, a pin wash or some dirt or something in there would uh, make those rivets and panel lines pop. And a quick check there with the metal ruler reveals that to be about 15 inches long. Let's take a quick look at the instructions and then we'll come back to the sprues. So we have this first booklet here, which has a bit of history on the front. And this is the instructions for the V2 and the trailer. You can tell this is quite an old kit because it's quite a large format instruction booklet. These days, TACOM would shrink this down um, into an A5 booklet, I think. You can see here there's not much going on in each step, yet each step still takes a, uh, a large page. That's great for us, but I guess uh, Tacom have cut it down in recent kits to uh, save paper. So construction looks fairly straightforward. Building up the base of the trailer. Just three or four parts there per wheel, an inner, an outer, um, a central hub and the tyre itself. And in just eight steps we are done with the trailer. The V2, of course, is also quite easy to construct. Two halves for the front section, two halves for the rear, a ring in the middle, with just a few small detail parts at the rear end. And we do have, up here in the top right corner, eight photo etch pieces that need to go on the side of that rocket at the front. Over the page, we add the rocket to the trailer, and then we've got a couple of photo etch um, brackets there to hold it into position. Inside the back cover we have one example of a paint scheme, which is the black and white, I guess, sort of a test scheme or prototype scheme perhaps. And we have two colour suggestions there for the Hanomag. If we flick to the second instruction book, this tells us how to build the Hanomag gun tractor. And this is more like Tacom's current format for instructions, the uh, a5 style booklet. We've got one paint scheme suggestion on the inside which is the Dunkel Girl with olive green camouflage. You can see here quite a lot more cramped on the instructions. But we build up the chassis and the engine. I'm just going to show you every other page so you get a general idea. Lots of underside detail.
the floor of the cab starts to get built in step 14. Then we're looking at interior details, seats, etc. An instrument panel with decals for the instruments. I've got plenty of spare German uh, figures in the seated position, so perhaps they could potentially go in the rear of that vehicle. Doors over here. Looking at the way that the front and the rear doors join that frame, I would suggest that it is possible to leave them posed in the open position. Which is always helpful. So it's good to sort of show the interior of a vehicle like that, isn't it? When it, uh, once you've built it up, especially since it's a hard top here, so we don't have the option of leaving that top off. And I guess we could also potentially leave the uh, side of the bonnet or the hood open if we wanted to. We have a couple of color scheme options here. So we've got the Dunkel Grau Dark Grey. Notice no markings on this. Then we've got a Dunkel Gelb version, so a later war version, post-1943. And finally we've got an olive green version, so a very late war version then, when olive green became the base coat for German vehicles. OK, let's have a quick look at some of the sprues. We've seen the rocket so far. Here is our other rocket sprue which has those extra details, most obviously the fins for the other two sides. This is quite a common tack on thing to do here that we have the piece attached to a sprue gate and we've kind of got a sprue gate on the other side of the piece as well. I'm not quite sure what the uh, technological reason for that is but it is quite common on tackum kits. As you can see here even on these really large pieces we only have the uh, faintest um, mark there which is like an injector pin mark I think. So very little cleanup required. Next up we have a sprue which contains some of the cab parts. We've got some mudguard pieces there. We've got a seat over here with some texture in it. All looking very clean. All of them with eject pin marks in um, suitably hidden places. So the insides of the mudguards there. Or in the case of some of these pieces, no eject pin marks at all. Next up we have another small sprue with a huge engine block piece there, all moulded in one with lots of detail on it. We have the cab floor here with the anti-slip texture pattern on it. And the roof of the cab. Quite a few eject pin marks on the inside of the roof there, but I suppose that's the if you've got to have them there, that's the best place to put them, isn't it? One more sprue here for the cab, so those are the doors there. Interestingly, we've got a short shot there, I think, on the uh, protective piece on the two doors here that goes in the window. It's just not quite, uh, not quite uh, injected all the way. That doesn't matter, of course. It's going to be cut off. But lovely, fine, sharp moulding on everything else. Finally, let's look at this sprue here, which has the wheels and a few other bits and pieces, suspension arms. We do have the um, sprue gates there, right on the edge on the rim of the wheels. I'm not a fan of that, it makes it quite hard to cut them off without damaging the wheel rim. Uh, but it is quite, again, quite a tackum thing to do. And finally we have all of the tyres in the kit, both for the trailer and for the uh, Hanamag, supplied as uh, rubber tyres. I'm not quite sure why companies do this, why they don't just mould tyres. I don't know anyone who prefers rubber tyres because they always get painted in the end anyway, because it doesn't look realistic in this rubber. But you can see that we've got lots and lots of detail there, um, the writing on the inside, really nice and sharp. Right, now we've had a quick look at the kit, the question is, what am I going to do with it? Before I go any further, I should say, I do also have this uh, crane kit here, minus the tank, that's not included. I originally bought this for my King Tiger full interior kit from Tacom, with the idea of having it um, lifting the turret off to show the interior, but I never used it in that regard. So potentially I could use this with the V2. As always when thinking about ideas, I looked at lots of reference photos, 
especially those from the IWM, the Imperial War Museum, uh, photo archive. They have a wealth of material, including these shots here of the V2 in uh, launching configuration or being prepared for launch. I've already decided that I don't want to do this in the launch position, however, this is quite helpful for paint schemes if I don't want to do that black and white um, sort of a gridded scheme. The main collection of photos I found were described as coming from a V2 preparation and chemical weapon site which was captured by Allied commandos. A lot of them showed really badly damaged V2s, uh, sometimes on railway wagons, some damaged um, transport trailers, and so on. Now I don't want to do a full-on absolutely destroyed V2, partly because I'd have to build the inside of it. But I do quite like the idea that I saw in some of these photos of the V2s being transported on railway wagons. Sometimes intact, sometimes partially built. And you can see here that it doesn't necessarily look like the Germans had special um, transports to transport these. This photo in particular, for example, you can see the V2 is clearly longer than the wagon and it sort of uh, protrudes over into the next wagon along. So I'm wondering if I could do something like that. I was of course talking about my railway and train kits in a recent video and of course those figures I showed you who um, could be guarding a railway uh, location. So I could have this V2 on a railway, I could have it being captured as it is in these photos, or I could have it being active still and uh, in use by German soldiers. Another thing I thought is I could maybe be a bit cheeky and give the impression of having more than one V2 uh, in a couple of different ways. Firstly, I thought if I built the V2 up and maybe covered it in cling film and then put some tissue over the top soaked in um, PVA glue and water, I could essentially create a tarp that goes over the top of it and then I could um, remove that tarp and it would look like there was a V2 underneath it perhaps, even though there wasn't. I'm not fully sure about that idea. Of course I could also try and find a V2 online and just print one out or something roughly that shape. I could again cover it with a tarp if it wasn't a super detailed model. The other thing I could do, and I can't for the life of me find an example of it now, but I've seen loads online, is cut the model in half and for example use the front half on the left side of the diorama like it's coming into frame and the rear half on the right hand side of the diorama like it's going out of frame if you see what I mean. So it gives the kind of impression of two V2s even though we're only seeing half of each one it's, it was actually the same model. I'm sure you know what I mean and again I've seen them all over the place online um, but I can't find an example now. Of course all of those ideas could include just the V2 or it could have it on the trailer, it could include the Hanamag gun tractor or not, it all depends. Another option is I could have the V2 on the trailer abandoned with the truck at the side of the road, perhaps with American forces or British forces coming in the direction. And a bit of a left field idea, but perhaps I could do a post-war diorama. Of course at the end of the war the British, the Americans and the Russians all scrambled to take German um, rocket technology. So perhaps even I could do a modified version of the rocket being tested or perhaps a captured version being shown to civilians. In fact I didn't realise until I was making this video that the first images of Earth taken from space were taken by a modified V2 rocket. It was V2 number 13 and it was launched on the 24th of October 1946 from the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. In fact, before we go, let's watch the newsreel footage of that. At White Sands, New Mexico, the huge missile takes off. Air Force pictures show the rocket in flight, and the flying camera automatically takes over. 
A huge projectile drops the Earth behind at the tremendous speed of 4,000 feet per second. The rotation of the rocket causes the planet to spin before the lens, and the camera photographs the Earth 65 miles straight down. The horizon, 720 miles away, and the curvature of the Earth are astonishingly apparent in this still picture from the film. An observer in the rocket could have seen San Diego, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, and San Antonio. Approximately 1,600,000 square miles of the Earth's surface was revealed. The rocket reached the 65-mile height in three minutes. This giant engine of destruction, designed by Hitler to annihilate allied nations, now serves the worthy cause of peacetime research. Anyway guys, if you do have any ideas about how I could use this V2 and the trailer and the cab, or one or more parts of this kit, do feel free to leave a comment below. I really like listening to your ideas, and I always appreciate your thoughts and comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was just a quick one and there was no building of course, but there will be some builds coming up in the near future. So thank you to everyone for watching, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members, and until next time, have fun modelling.